This is the I'm Kinda Famous Podcast. I'm your host, Lester Rowe. And this is another EFC Evolution Fighting Championship special of the I'm Kinda Famous Podcast. So, this is going to be another two for one week uh, with an episode for EFC. Promoting EFC 6 coming September 2nd at the Kansas Star Casino and Arena. But before we get any further into this, make sure you go to the Facebook page, Kind of Famous Pod, K-I-N-D-A Famous Pod, P-O-D, and the Evolution Fighting Championship Facebook at EFC Wichita. Uh, let's see, Arrow Films, that's the personal website, that's where you go to see all my content uh, that I made, the photography stuff, these clean people collect the shirts, so you get this merch, I got them I'm Kind of Famous t-shirts up there, uh, and a bunch of stuff. I can't, I can't think of everything. And make sure while you're at arrowfilms.com, you go over and get that Wi-Fi rock bottom book. Then watch the documentary. Like I said before, we got a, a deal coming up to get that thing published, published, instead of self-published for that book. So you can get that first edition or you can wait for that second edition, but you can at least watch the documentary while you wait for that. Uh, I'm pretty sure some other plugs. That's exciting, huh? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, you know, I, I'm just out here being magnificent. You know, <laughs> it's That's dope. That's a nice hustle, man. I saw, I, I, I peeped it a little bit, man. That's cool. That's a, it's pretty, it's pretty gripping, gripping stuff you got That's there, what they man. say. That's what they say. They watching it. They say, based on the numbers across all streaming devices and stream, ways to watch it, the Wi-Fi, even the bootlegs. I don't know. It's free and people <laughs> they're bootlegging, bootlegging it. <laughs> a free documentary. We almost we about as of recording. We're right around seven hundred thousand views. That's cool, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. Hey, organic. The dopest thing about it is that a lot of the conversation is just organic. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, it's nothing scripted, huh? It's, all- it's not scripted. I mean, I'm not. I, I don't even know how to explain it because it's not like. I super duper promoted. It's just like over time, people just like started going over to a documentary about meth. Checking it out, huh? And buying the book. So, and then everyone, I get email damn near every day about it. Somebody inspired, somebody don't like her. It's like the fact, I think if you can make, have the people like something and have the people hate something, you got you're, something because they're going to keep going. Right there, you're in there. Because everybody like it. It probably ain't as good, and as everybody hated it, it probably ain't as good either. <laughs> yeah, you need something polarizing a tiny bit. I right? think you do. I think with anything, I think with anything, you got to split the audience. If you split some, split the audience enough, that means you're doing something that make people react. Because anybody can just like anything or right. just hate anything. But if you can not only split it in half and make them fight each other. Now, I ain't trying to make nobody fight, but that's what they doing. Well, the thing is, like with, some, with something like that is everyone knows someone. Yeah. Everyone knows someone. That is true. Everyone knows someone. I'm so tell it, you. it relates to some, everyone in some way. Everyone can relate to it. And it gives everybody some kind of feeling. It does. It, it, it apparently. Some kind, of, some kind of emotion. One thing I didn't realize was that a, as I've been on a journey with this this uh, documentary and book, is that like, there's a lot of meth addiction. A lot of, like, as we, everybody know crackheads and coke. All this kind of shit. But, like, when it comes to meth, it's just, like, it's way more than I expected. Because yeah. everyone everyone I meet who I talk about the doc or whatever, there's, like, yeah, my friend or my yeah, cousin or my family, like man. Yeah, and like, damn, is it really, like, that rampant? It's sad, man. It is. So, yeah, and speaking of, if you go over to arrowfilms.com, read the latest. Well, shit. I, it ain't going to be the latest. But one of the blog posts we talk about, one of the next documentaries I'm working on, um, it basically called Meth County, and I'm gonna tour Kansas and have the and, and and really see what this epidemic is about. Um, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, uh, what well, shit? I can't remember now. All right, well, this is the EFC. Um, I'm kind of famous podcast special, and who's already been talking before I've been able to introduce him <laughs> is Cody Carrillo. Fighting at EFC 6, 
for one of these belts, lightweight, a you know the belt, belt. Yeah. lightweight belt. See, I'm a heavyweight motherfucker, so you know <laughs> I can't just be out here with this lightweight nonsense. But he is fighting Josh Pfeiffer for in a rematch for the first EFC um, lightweight belt in the second official EFC championship belt. EFC six September second. At the Kansas Star Casino Arena. You can still get tickets right now. By the time you hear this, you can still get tickets right now. But before we get into all that, we recorded this days before the Mayweather McGregor fight. By the time you hear this, we'll know who what what happened, if the fight happened or whatever. Right, right. Who you got? Uh I mean, like, it's a it's a funny proposition this entire fight is like just because it's uh outrageous and only in the year 2017 could something like this happen. Uh, it could have happened any year, but, but well, this is just a year of spectacles. It's out, yeah, it's outrageous. Outrageous. We have uh, a caricature in the White House. We have <laughs> uh, and we have quite possibly the greatest boxer ever uh, fighting against someone who's never boxed before. Let's say the most successful boxer ever. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. He's I a, can't call him the greatest. He, I, I, we, I just I say he's possible. It's possible. He's I. I would put. He's. You have to. You have to call him top five. I don't have to. You have to. All right. You can't. You give me leave. one. Let's. We'll, and you. And this is a loose list. Who's number one? Well, you have to go with Sugar Ray Robinson. Now, are you talking pure weight class, or uh, we talking uh, across box? Pound for pound. Across okay. Boxing. Robinson. Who you got two? And then uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. He's uh, y'all. His name called a career, so he gonna name some Hispanic people. <laughs> Three, and then you had Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay, four, Floyd Mayweather. Floyd. Now you talking pound for pound? Pound for pound. This is this is uh this is loose off the top. Yeah, I would say Floyd. I would put Floyd right there, number four, man. He said Sugar Ray Robinson. No, Sugar, Sugar Ray Robinson one. And you, did you say Leonard? Leonard three. I would say, but it, at this point, at this point in time, the thing is like with Sugar Ray Leonard, he fought everyone. Like when he fought, he fought everyone. And Julio Cesar Chavez, he 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 fought everyone at the end of his career. But he, I mean, like you know, the guy the guy started out his career almost a, damn near a hundred and oh. But how do you give Mayweather four, four and he doesn't fight everyone? Not when he should. Nah, yeah, yeah. He's he's been smart, man. But he's and he. He's fought Pacquiao. He fought a young Canelo. He fought he fought Oscar De La Hoya. Okay, hold he on. He fought Arturo Gotti at uh, when he when he beat Arturo Gotti and Arturo Gotti didn't touch him. That was one of the most impressive things I thought I ever saw, and that was before his money Mayweather. That's when he was still Pretty Boy Floyd. Yeah, he was a boxer then. Yeah, but but when you give you say he fought Pacquiao, he fought Canelo. I think that's a. Like, it's timing. He yeah, fights absolutely. people at a perfect time. I, I agree. Because if he fought pa- Pac-Man when he was supposed to fight him, who knows what would right. happen. Carnelo, like, now he's a different fight. Yeah, Even when he took that fight, I was like, They're, like that's BS. Because he knows that kid isn't ready yeah. for that fight. Right, exactly. And he wasn't. He, he knew he was a future prospect, but he knew it was. Because now when you look at it, if on paper... When the boxing guys look back at it, the boxing committee look at it, they're going to be like, oh, man, he fought uh, 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 Shane Mosley. Yeah. He fought... Uh, <laughs> it's uh, the list is going to look name? nice. What's his name? De La Hoya. Yeah. He fought all these people. Castillo, Berto, fucking... All these people. But then if you go back, like, in the moment. See, I know I'm going to be one of them people that, like, like the Mayweather... Not Mayweather. Ali. The, someone that was hating on Ali, like this motherfucker fought George Foreman when George Foreman had one arm. You can't beat a man with one arm. <laughs> That's what they're gonna do. I'm gonna right. be that guy talking about Mayweather. Like, now nah, he, he fought this motherfucker right. when he was 17 years old. He was 38 with and the he, hardest punch in the he world. He did. He did. I think he fought. Now, so he fought some guys in the prime. Diego Corrales. He fought Diego Corrales in his prime. And Diego Corrales at the time was an absolute killer. That's pre money, though. That was. That that's was that's when he was a fighter. That yeah. when he beat like Zab, when he beat Zab Judah, that's the first time. That's the first time that I I watched him and I was like, because I was a Zab Judah fan. Yeah. And so when he won, when he shook, but see, that was Zab Judah fought, he lost that fight. He should have chilled out, found some composure. He probably <laughs> who knows what happened. That fight, 
I think Kodo personally, I think Kodo beat him. That was a good fight. I, I think that's the one where he won that fight because it was Mayweather at that yeah. point. Because I think Kodo won. Maydonna, I don't know. You could take it either that way. Was close. I would at least give it a draw. De La Hoya, uh, De La Hoya fight was close. Close, but uh, De La Hoya was winded by the end, and when you look like like that at the end, it's weird. Uh, you have to remember, these dudes are all dudes that are bigger than him naturally. And then he stole that one against the Mexican boy. What's his name? Uh, where where he sucker punched him. <laughs> Ortiz. He's Ortiz. From Kansas. He's from Garden City. It was shit. He in the guard now because he went straight the shit out of that, that fight. It. That was it. Yeah. He broke his jaw. Broke. Sucker punched and broke his jaw. He broke his jaw? Yeah. I ain't even. That's it. I, that, man. See, and I he think I think he was bullying Mayweather a little bit. Who knows what that would have happened? Because I think, I, but okay, so we still didn't answer the question. Mayweather, I, may, I got Mayweather. Uh, if if Mayweather loses a single round, it's an upset, and it speaks a lot towards boxing. Because, like no, what? Like uh, as as far as like, he's got he's got the whole pressure of the entire boxing community on his back, like. If he loses a single round to Conor McGregor, it's, it's an upset. But at the same time, conversely, Conor McGregor is not going to come out and move like a traditional boxer. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually get, and he's bigger, and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to give Floyd some problems. And I think that, but Floyd is, is the master of adjustments, the master of adjustments. What he did from, when, he, the, when was he figured out what Madonna was doing? Because Madonna, that's why Madonna gave him trouble, because Madonna was throwing crazy looping, like overhand punches. Once he made that adjustment, started stepping out the stepping out the other way, and then turning on him like it was over. Like the next two fights, it was, it was a wash. Like you know, next but fight see, and a half. I think that I think that McGregor, the advantage McGregor got is that he has nothing to lose from boxing. So right. if he loses this, he has yeah, nothing to lose. And because of that, he can go out there and be wild. He can go out there and be non traditional. And I think it's. It's possible that he could lose a round. I mean, I, I, or a couple rounds just on the strength of a man going out there to... I, I don't know. It's one of them weird things. If, I don't know if McGregor's going to go out there to box or if he's going to go out there to win or fight, better, better yet. If he, With, bo- if he boxes, he, he, he's done. He's going to have to fight. But it's, it's uh, people like try and make like, oh, he doesn't box. Like, and uh, McGregor is... is uh, I mean, he fights and he, you know, he knows range. He knows striking range and... He knows how to hit people and not get hit. So I mean, like he's not—he's not like a sucker, but yeah, I mean, like it's a tall task for anybody. I, see, I don't know how tough it is. See, I—I I think the mental warfare game that may Mayweather is just like if if someone what 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 natural weight class are you fighting? Uh, I've been one fifty five. Yeah. So you you would fight. It's like if someone said, "Hey, we gonna have you go fight McGregor." Yeah. That would fucking be in your head. A little bit. Yeah, and not that, much. But if not much. Not for me. For my McGregor. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's the thing is like this McGregor lives on lives on lives on living in people's heads. When Nate Diaz got off that boat and said, I guess uh I'll put down this tequila and come fight you. Like that's what that's that's when McGregor was already whooped because he he could he can't bully. He's a bully, man. He can't bully Nate Diaz like that. The same same as he can't bully he tries to bully Money May, and the same as Money tries. Money's used to being the bully, but he knows he doesn't have to lead this dance. All right, but hold on. Going back to Diaz. Yeah. With Diaz, if that's the case, why did he lose the second fight? I don't think he lost it. Okay, I do. <laughs> but the first fight, I would give it to Diaz for the sake that it was last minute, and. McGregor went up. I think that was a catch weight fight. Is it? Yeah, it's one, they both went up. They both went up. Is that one seventy? Which is ridiculous. That's a big Nate, jump. Nate is. Nate, I mean, Nate is uh, is a fifty five pounder, and Connor's the fifty five pound champ now. So, but Nate was coming in already. Yeah. overweight. He yeah, wasn't yeah. gonna make fifty five. Yeah, he came in like from vacation. Days or yeah, he came from vacation. Like it's so. It speak, speaks a lot to what. <laughs> what ha- I mean, what I happened. think he would have won. I think that's why he won. He just came in there bigger because he. He won off. Was it? What was that? Second or third he, round? Yeah, he won. He won off of the submission, but it was. Uh, I mean, he dropped him, and then Connor decided to wrestle, and you you can't you can't really do that against Nate Diaz. Like 
his guillotine his guillotine he's got a real strong guillotine man and he's and he's just is great off his back he's good man he has some of the most uh recognizable submissions off his back and and he can box he can box he, and he can because the problem with the difference between his boxing and conor mcgregor's boxing is conor is so dependent on that huge left hand and nate can jab 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 use his right hand jab 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 and he waited, patient, patient. Connor's throwing the right, left hand over the top of the jab, left hand over the top of the, you know, until until he just got hit with a double jab cross, and then he just found it, found his home. Do you think he hits harder than McGregor? Nate, no. All right. So everything you just said basically would sum up a Mayweather McGregor fight. <laughs> so close. If, if Mayweather won. Yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. I, because yeah. if you're saying that he's just going to go in there and depend on this thing, well, we know Mayweather is a good defender. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's, and that's that's what I'm scared is going to happen. It's just that no one's going to. Why are you scared? No, you I ain't was, fighting. I'm scared, that, <laughs> I'm scared that we're just not going to get. It's going to be the same thing for the, everybody. Everybody builds up to this thing like they did for the Pacquiao. And then it goes out here and it turns out that Connor can't hit Floyd. And Floyd won't hit Connor. So. <laughs> then we sit here and everybody's pissed hey, off. Hey, like y'all knew what y'all was getting right. into. No, they don't. Though. Mayweather done is for public, at least the last ten fights. Right? Yeah, absolutely. The general public doesn't know though, and that happens as these shows like let them build up, like oh Fl uh, Floyd's going to go after him. Floyd's going to go after him, and then he doesn't. He's not. I mean, I don't. I don't see him going after him. So, do you still want to see Mayweather fight? Period. I think there's fights I like to see. I like. I want. I like to see him with Bud Crawford. Well, I want to see. So, but, are, are you saying you want to? You're not saying you want to see him fight. You want to see him lose, because <laughs> no one really uh, wants to see him fight, right? I, yeah, yeah. I'd like to see. Like, I, I mean, want to see him against Earl Spence. Yeah, that's a good strategic. or Triple G. Yeah, uh, Triple G. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a, that's a that's a tall order. That's it. The thing is, like, he's such a, a strategist. If you can admire that, then you like to watch him, and that's why I like to see him against Bud Crawford because Bud. Punches from, punches hard from both hands from both stances, and I mean he's he's a problem. He's a problem. Speaking of problems, why why am oh, yeah. I I'm messing my whole it. thing up? Speaking of problems, EFC six, EFC six, main Love event, that. main event, baby. Josh Pfeiffer, he was a problem for you last fight because <laughs> you lost it. By decision, controversial decision. People think that you won versus the other way yeah, around. I've, you know, it, how do you take that and in going into this fight? Uh, I think this is round four of the same fight, man. We saw how they ended. That's a long, that's a long rest. Yeah, man, it's a long rest. I think I don't think me as far as me, like you know, when I come in on uh, you know, nine, ten days notice, like you know, you get a tiny bit of uh, a tiny bit of my repertoire. And uh, did you win? Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to say that. No, no. I, What's I mean, your heart tell you? I mean, my heart says I won. I mean, I, you know, I lost a. It's crazy, man. Like I lost a round. I dropped him in the round and lost the round. Hey, man. It, it wasn't. It, he, <laughs> it was a slip. Yeah. They call it a slip. Yeah. And I, it's nah, it's I tough, man. Uh, and I, and I've and the last thing I want to do is take anything away from Josh because. Man, uh, Josh, Josh brings it, and he brought it that, and he brought it that night, and like, like I, I, I was surprised, and then I thought, oh, sometimes when you're surprised, you go back, and you're like, oh, I didn't go how I thought, and then I go back and look at the fight, and then I'm like, oh no, it actually went how I thought it went. So yeah, it's it's a tough pill to swallow, but is there anything you would have did different? Oh, lots. There's lots I would have did different. Yeah, absolutely. Like what? Uh, you know, it, you just uh, I fought really linear, man. I fought really linear, which. You know, I'm cut, if, as long as I'm cutting off on my angles, I don't get hit by a wild, a wild right hand like that, which got hurt, which hurt me. Like, other than that, man, I would, and I probably would have, I probably would have pressed for the finish more. And that's that's my style. Is I should have, I should have done that. You know, when I had him hurt in the third, I should have went after him. Well, they more. say he didn't fight necessarily his style either. Nah, he, he did, did more of your style. Great. Yeah, he he wanted to. Uh, you know, he he's a grappler, man, and. And he'll be trying to grapple this time. And that's, now, did that throw you off? The fact that he wasn't grappling? No, no, he tried to grapple. He got, he, he, I mean, he took me down twice, but I stopped five takedowns. So, like, it's not like he chose, like, oh, like, oh, he chose, like, 
he 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 got he got if you st- if I'm stopping the takedowns, then he has to stand up. Now, do, do are you looking for the finish this time? Oh, one hundred percent. Now, does it matter? Okay, so this fight happened. I mean, just I mean May. months ago. May, yeah. yeah. So that's a quick kind of turnaround. Are you yeah. sure you ready to go right uh, into 100%. that already? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Man, I don't know, man. Y'all be moving too fast. <laughs> I like, I mean, if it were my choice, I would fight every weekend. It's not your choice. Nah, it's not. You can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. All right. So what, what I I would say, what is the what's the? I don't know if I can ask that question because it's gonna go out there. Uh, what are you looking for him to do in this fight? Oh, he definitely wants to grapple more. He definitely wants to grapple more, and he's definitely thinking that he's gonna land that right hand again. And what are you looking to do? I'm going to continue to do the same thing. Stick my jab right down his throat. Well, what is it? Stick my jab down his throat. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, but but does it, since he's switched up essentially the to to learn to stand yeah. a little bit more than he did before, why would you think he would want to go not continue to do that and do it better this time? Uh, I think that yeah, I think that he's gonna be more persistent about because it to... worked for him last time. Yeah. So why right. wouldn't you continue? If this is round four, why yeah. you wouldn't just continue what worked? I think that got I, you a win. Yeah, because round three didn't work out like that for him. I think he's going. I mean, he's gonna try and grapple, and he sh- and he should. Like he's a good grappler, man. He's a great MMA grappler. Uh, no, don't. I'm now. I'm not saying I can't grapple because I can. I, it don't sound like you can. You're see, like, I don't, don't want to do all yeah, that. I'm gonna see, make him stand up. Yeah. Now I. I mean, uh, I'm here. We're here in a grappling gym. Um, I grapple more than I, I train grappling more than I train striking. But I'm a striker, man. I like to fight, and um, the people want to see that, man. What is it like? I mean, this is the second time being on the EFC card, but now you're on the EFC card for a more significant fight than your last one. I mean, you're fighting local. You're fighting with uh, under Caveman's brand with you know. Uh, Another good, great fight that happened that had be coming before you between Marcio and Brandon Chevy. Chevy, uh, <laughs> you recently fought. I mean, you you have fought Marcio before. Like it's almost. I'm trying. I'm trying to watch my language. It's all. It's like an incestual <laughs> thing that is happening here. Where I mean, all you guys kind of know each other. Yeah, work with each other. Like how? How do I don't? Shit, I, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say. Um. How do how do you deal with the fact that you know you 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 are having to challenge these people, beat these people? I mean, hurt them something, and, and I would be trying to hurt everybody, right? And then turn around and kind of be friendly with them in a the gym when you run across them again. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's me. I don't really have a problem with it. I've I've I have no problem being peaceful and professional. And to me, it is business. And I really just lo- I mean like. If that, if you know, Josh were to come in here right now and uh, put his mouthpiece in his hand wraps on, we could spar, you know, ten rounds. Like, why? <laughs> right. I would want to hurt him before my fight. Right? This, yeah. This is a payday. Just, but yeah, exactly. And so, and and this is and this is uh, it's a different it's a different dynamic fighting in front of people. But I like to fight, man. That's what. So it can be, you know, Marcy was just in here last week. He'll be in here again. Like, uh, we we train we train Marcy and I train together on and off. It's but it's it's about to me it's about the arts it's mm. about the martial art it's not a real fight to me like I don't know, it's not personal this one might be a tiny bit yeah I mean he stole it from me so might be say. a tiny all right now what is it like doing I mean taking that you did that over at VFC now you're bringing this over to a local brand EFC was it like fighting on a car like that as day before like you you're able to get all these these big big names relatively for a six show fighting on this card and you you fought in bellator vfc other places was that like being it now being to do it here doing it at home and something that's a little more intimate than these man these it's dramatic it's, shows that are it's there. great man it's great uh coming home fighting here is uh it's like it is a little bit of like a throwback for me man because we used to fight used to fight here a lot and um now I have to travel, you know, search opponent, search for opponents, and coming back here and and Dave's my boy. I want to help him out, and I want to like uh, you know, 
do Wichita right. So it's it's cool, man. It's 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 nice to bring like, and it has it has a big show feel. It does like the the production. Like you know the stuff. You're that, welcome. Yeah, you're the welcome. stuff. The stuff that you're doing, like with the uh, <laughs> the stuff that you're doing with that, is like is is cool, man. It has a big show feel, and I'm coming to bring a big show fight, man. Like it, like I wish I wish that everyone could hear this, man. I like I'm I'm coming to bring a big show fight. Like I'm bringing the big show atmosphere, you know, like coming out and coming to throw down, like. Now, I'm going to switch gears real quick. Speaking of big shows, what do you think about this John Jones situation here? Ah, yeah. See, now we're opening a whole new can of worms. Um, you know, no one really knows what the, what he did or what happened besides him and maybe, like, you know, his small inner circle. Man, I think, it, you know, he had a lot of pressure on him, man. The guy came back. It's a lot of pressure. You got a, a monster like Daniel Cormier across from you. If, if he he did if he did that you know it's because of if he's taking peds it's because of pressure man and and people trying to uh you know did they say what 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 it, it was, was? It was uh, i i read tyrannoball I, I don't know what that which is, is like is that? Uh, which is a very anabolic steroid but hold on let's go backwards so let's go back to that fight itself so at the end of that fight you got Cromier. And the criticism he was getting for how he responded to yeah. the end of that fight, like that was a big fight, and he lost. Why do you think he responded that way, man? It's in tears. This is like his life's work, man. Like this is like you know. But it's you like, lose fights all the time. Not necessarily. I mean, you do, but not Daniel Cormier doesn't. You know, that's not like it's his life's work. Like it really was. It's like the culmination. You know, like you know, he grew up wrestling, collegiate wrestling, Olympic wrestling, like then started fighting and like everything like this is his life's work and he you know you could tell that man had his heart in it and he he gave that was his life and and for him to be upset that's completely understandable sometimes i think that the majority of fighters are upset yeah the professional fighters are upset when they lose a fight um we not, saw out Al, how aldo reacted yeah. at the end of losing the mcgregor just not just not all 10 of them seconds or just not all of them have uh, a microphone in their face when it happens you know that's that's the difference i think it's a, it's a tough thing man it's it's one of the weirdest things that I've ever experienced is like, you know, being in a fight, training, like going after it and then getting beat. And then the people like with the camera, you know, like less than a foot from your face, like you, oh, whoa, like, you know, it's like. But it's part of that it's be good. because not, it was somewhat a personal feud between those two. I think, I think it had a lot to do. I don't think, I think you would have felt like that either way. I mean, like at that level, it's the pinnacle, it's the pinnacle of martial arts and, um, Either one of them would have been very upset, I believe. Now, with what was alleged of Judd and Jones, do you think that uh, Cromier should, I mean, should there be another <laughs> fight there or, oh, or should they just I, leave it alone? I don't, yeah, I don't see him fighting. I don't see him fighting again. I, it's tough, man. I feel bad for Daniel Cormier. He poured his heart into stuff. But, you know, outside of the <laughs> UFC. Did, would that have made, did that, do you think that made a difference? Uh, hard to tell. It's hard to tell if that really gave him like an advantage. I mean, obviously it gives him an advantage. The way that the steroids work, like if he was on steroids like that, it would give him an advantage. Like he can train without getting hurt or train without getting tired. You know, it helps with the fatigue. And I, I mean, people take it for a reason. You know, it makes them feel it makes them feel better. So if you're feeling better, you're probably. I mean, obviously, if if he was taking steroids, he was taking them for a reason, and they were helping him. So. Now, do you, do you think that John Jones may have a target on him? Yeah, of course. Be because I mean, with that said, if it, when a person does. started to get busted the way he's been getting busted yeah. over time, it kind of, for some, puts all that into question from yeah, the, how everything. he got it. But then to me, I'm like, I mean, I, I see y'all, and I'm just like, I don't know why you wouldn't take anything, right? That it, and believe me, most people do who are not in the UFC. They do like most people are taking something like. If hey hey if, if they were to come, if you were to show up with a piss cup at weigh-ins next week at EFC, these some of these dudes would be popping hot. I'm telling you right now. Uh, uh, Jesus, okay, <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Like, I'm telling you, they would be peeing hot. I I I'm not coming on this. We're doing the EFC special. <laughs> I'm to, like, if this hey, is my regular show, but, we could talk shit all day. But I I I'm, I, just, I mean I just want to point that out. Like in the UFC, they have such a stringent testing policy. 
Like they they detect anything, so it's wild for something that is gonna be that he should know that someone should have told him. Like, hey man, this is gonna show up. Like, well, okay. With that said, do you think that it was one of those things he intentionally did, or did it just somehow <laughs> get to him? I want to think. I want to like. Think. I mean, you can eat, you can eat a good steak, and yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I want to. I want to believe that he didn't do it on purpose, man. Because God dang, man, let's let's. It just got biggest just, fight. I mean, <laughs> one of the biggest fights that would have been for him in his life. Yeah. His comeback, you know, trying to get a little bit respect back from all that he lost, and then yeah, I would I would throw it away. I want, I'm really trying to give him the benefit of the doubt just because I don't know the dude like that. But it's a speculation. I don't and, think he did it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some conspiracy theories out there already. Like that. I don't <laughs> think he, he got, did it. I read it. I read it. Um. I read that he got set up, but <laughs> man, this, oh man, that's, set up like how, like, like a fake test? Yeah, so I don't. I read that he got set up. Like, oh, they're saying like, you know, he had one of his coaches was saying they're saying that he took a oral steroid the night before he fought. It's a setup, and I was like, oh, okay, but you know, the internet is a funny thing these days. So I don't really these know, days. <laughs> Just these days is funny. <laughs> you gotta take everything with a grain of salt, man. So I, I'm not sure, and and I'm not gonna pass judgment on the dude. He's an amazing fighter, and I I want Daniel Cormier to win because I like Daniel Cormier. He's more of a uh, John Jones is gifted. He's talented. He's just and he has a big pair of nuts, man. The dude will just try anything in a fight. But Daniel Cormier is like the epitome of a grinder, like you know someone who's just like. Okay, I don't have, you know, I'm just going to be working hard every day, be in your face, and then in a fight, the same thing, in your face, head in your chest, like, going after it. What, what has been your favorite fight that you were in? My favorite fight that I was in? Yeah. Ooh, that's a, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. I've had Nothing some, but the tough questions. I've had, some, I've had some good ones. Uh. Man, I had a fight with Alonzo Martinez, which was pretty fun. He he did a lot of laying and praying, but uh, we were throw, we were throwing heat for a little bit. I like to like, and sometimes you think a fight is gonna go a certain way. You're like, man, we're gonna throw out, we're gonna come out here, and we're gonna throw down, and then dudes are like come and try and wrestle you. So a different Tyler Toner, uh, UFC veteran. I fought him main event Ring of Fire, Ring of Fire in Denver, Colorado, and uh, that was a really fun fight, man. I he, uh, I ended up separating my ribs in a weird grappling, like the only grappling exchange of the of the uh, entire fight, and and it's, oh, what the, it separates ribs. Yeah, what was that it's about? Like he, uh, he actually like it was weird. He like punched me up underneath. Oh, my, I'm sure he punched. It was like a hammer fist though. It was like a hammer fist. So I was on top of him. He hammer fisted me up underneath my rib cage, and my rib popped out. And Zerger's sitting in my corner in between. I was like, man, I think my ribs messed up. And he looks down. He's like, oh, yeah, it is. He's like, what do you want to do? I said, well, let's go out and try and knock him out for a couple minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a fun. That was a fun fight, mostly because uh, Tyler is a great, like, pioneer of, of kickboxing. And it was cool to, like, go out there and throw down and throw some hands and kicks with him. Man. It was fun. I so, lost that one. I lost that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, the, the boat that you done named, you done lost. What is is there any fight that you want back that you would want to say you know that that fight I could have did I didn't do everything that man I, I have I have probably a good dozen fights like that man against some of the best guys in the world like and that's what people don't realize is that when I, I was like you if you do your research on my record look at the guys you're fighting like oh he fought oh man he fought him and and most of those are on like less than two weeks notice and i'm just out here to bang and those dudes remember me they see me they're like hey what's up like james vick uh who who went who started who went on like a six six and oh run in the ufc or whatever like uh it's like the monstrous lightweight he sees me he recognized me immediately like I, like these dudes are like mashad bektik like like top of the line dudes like and i gave them a run for their money man. I'm, I'm about to set you up this is set up yes <laughs> So speaking of like you know you the the, the quality of your record yeah. of uh, of a record um what do you think about people who just pad the record to seem more impressive you know that's i can i can understand that i can see why they would do that 
Nah, for me that ain't that ain't how I am, man. I don't want to. I like we were just talking about that before. Like I don't, I don't want to fight anybody who can't fight, man. Like I want to fight. I've, I'm out here to test. Like I'm like old school. Like I want to test my art against your art and see who the best person is. Like now, is do you personally look at someone with someone, uh, uh, someone's record to see who who, you know? Hold on. Let me let me phrase this. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Yeah. Uh, with some of the controversy of EFC, you have <laughs> Chuka Willis, <laughs> Steve Wynn, Ty Clark, all in this kind of thing where it's basically about the quality of fights versus, you know, the work you actually put in. <laughs> Now, Chuka has made a lot of inflaming comments about that. <laughs> but, I mean, I think he sort of has a point. You know, if I look at someone's record, I want to see impressive fights. Like I was saying about uh, Nico. You know, Nico has Nico is an Olympic bronze medal- yeah. medalist, and he's fighting kind of these garbage fights. Right. I mean, does that something that kind of makes you, like, kind of scuff at someone's ability because they're not fighting quality fights versus you know what happens is like you know what happens is those dudes like that doesn't mean they're like they're not completely capable like the type of people who who are like they might be really good and but they're just mowing through like turds right so but then when someone else kind of tough is in front of them they don't know how to handle that because they haven't been in that situation before so when they get a little bit of pressure put on them you know, some some of those dudes, they buckle. Some of those guys with the pretty records, they buckle. And I've been across from them, and I've watched them buckle at the end of my knuckles. Like, <laughs> I've watched them happen. Like, and some of them step up to the occasion. Like, that's, and, and that's what happens is, like, you know, like, you look at it, like, to me, like, where I'm at as a vet, been around the block, like, been in there, like I said, with the best dudes in the world, like, it don't matter what your record is. But if they haven't been tested then you never know man you don't know like if you don't test yourself how you know how can you call yourself this I, like for me personally if you don't test yourself how can you call yourself that now where we're at now with um with like uh steven and shuka like steven is the champion so like he i'm sure he's gonna do what a champion does and defend his belt if shuka comes to try to take his belt shuka's ultra talented has has fought is is more experienced against tougher fighters than Steven, but I think Steven is is has more tools than Shuka. I think that Steven is the champ and uh David knows his fighters. If David wouldn't David was not gonna put people in a in a title fight or in a place to be his champion if they weren't cap- if they weren't worthy of being a champion. Do is it is it better to have an impressive looking record as a stat or impre- impressive record versus fight reason i say that behind you we're looking at uh million dollar middle million <laughs> hits middleton back yeah. here and if you if you look in some degree of the pro record the number is not a good number right. it's a losing record but who she's fought right. have quality. been impressive quality fight and if you watch those fights, you say who she's fighting and watch, watch the quality of fights, you know, like, you know, Jessica's one of the best 125-pound women in the world. And she's 2-2, two and two, but no one wants to fight her. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, we're like, what, like, we're like no one's going to be like, oh, that's an easy fight. And everyone knows. Like, you know, that's the same thing. Like, you look at my record and everyone knows. Like, no one's like, oh, that's an easy fight because they know. Like, and I'll, I don't Should want- a fighter go for the, uh, uh, the challenges so that they are prepared you know, for it? Yeah, if you if you're really thinking like it depends how you want to do it, man. Like people handle it different ways. Like if you want to go business wise and be like, okay, I want to build my record as boxers do, and and you know I want to build my record. Or if you're like, okay, you want to like some people do like easy, easy, hard fight, easy, easy, hard fight. And but you got a boxer like Earl Spence who's calling. They he wants those hard fights. He wants fights. everyone. He's at the top of the line. Like that's what. And it no is. one wants to uh, some. In the same way as we talk about someone like Jessica, like they know that if I take this fight, this may not go my way. <laughs> right, right. I might, yeah, I might get messing knocked up out. their business. Yeah, I might get knocked out. So they and people turn down those fights. 
people turn down those fights. And I have a, I have a problem finding fights for the same reason. Like, you know, like, you know, on paper, it doesn't look good either way. Because you might get knocked out, which is pretty highly likely. And then you lost to someone with my record. And, but if you win, then it just looks like, oh, you beat someone with that record. Like, but no one, no one visually thinks that it's a good fight or an easy fight. Dave mentioned something on the last uh, episode about the slingshot fight. Basically, a fight where it may not be a win, but it's that, or it is that win that kind of catapults you to this next level. Some would say Chris Harris had that when he had the fight uh, at Bellator against uh, Marquez. Marquez. That that should have been. Uh, uh, shit. I, there was a question behind that, then I started thinking about the man name. So I don't know <laughs> what the fucking question is no more. The slingshot fight. I think there's, I mean, every shot, every fight has a chance to be a slingshot fight. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, when I've been here, man, I've gone on pretty good runs and I've been on pretty bad runs where I've fought well every single fight and just have come up short on decisions. Like, decisions are a whole nother can of worms for me, bro. I don't, like, <laughs> you got a lot of them. No, I don't, win, I don't win them. I don't win them. I can't win them. And, um, those Why guys, do you think you don't win the decisions? I mean, you, you have a high-volume way of fighting. Right. Why do you think you don't win them? I mean, it's, I think that sometimes um, it's politics, like just being straight up, straight up, like where I fight, where I fight and who I fight, where I fight them is, is politics. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, judges thinking that someone taking me down and putting their head in my chest is worth more than me, punching them in their face seven or eight times, you know. And it's different, man. It's different. It's like Mayweather. Mayweather doesn't leave Vegas. He doesn't right. fight outside of Vegas, right. which if this fight was to go to the card, to me, if th that fight goes to the cards, that's just a complete, yeah. he should just accept that as a loss. Yeah. 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 He shouldn't make it 10 rounds. No, no. no. It's just, yeah, it's or 12 a, rounds. 12 rounds. Yeah, it's a, man, yeah, no, I mean, everybody knows he's not going to win a decision. Like, McGregor's not going to win a decision. No one wins a yeah. decision against Mayweather no. in Vegas. No, you That's can't. why he's fights in Vegas when he, Right. Beat Castillo. That's that's enough to keep me in Vegas if they gonna treat me that well. <laughs> so yeah, not a lot, of, not a lot of motivation to leave. Like now, what makes you want have a high volume way of fighting? You would think that would tire a lot of people out when you're just constantly throwing yeah. at combinations. And man, I've I've just like I love. I don't really my gas tank is is just. I just have what's called a a, a natural gas tank, man. Like. You know, I, I what could, does that mean? I could a take it back. Gas tank. Well, I could take it back to my Aztec ancestors. You know, they said God bless us with bigger lungs and bigger hearts. So we just uh, <laughs> you came up with some mythology. I, I just, yeah, I, that that was actually the myth that you know the Aztec warriors they didn't they never tired. So, okay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now uh, <laughs> we'll look that up. The more <laughs> this is Aztec fables of it. Yeah. The more the more. The more I feel like, the more we fight, the more openings I have. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a technical like a fighter. So it looks, it might look like a brawl a little bit, but like what I'm looking for is like uh, you defend. Okay, if you defend my jab, if you defend my jab this way, and you do it twice in a row, the third time I'm gonna make you pay for that. So the more actions I see, the more of the way I see you're countering and defending the more chances I have to trick you. And I have so I have a lot of tricks, man. I have a lot of tricks. What made you decide to fight in that way? Is uh, there someone that influenced that or are you inspired by other fighters that uh, fight that way? No, I, th I think it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a hybrid. Like, you know, like Andy Zerger, like, you know, built, like, gave me, like, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful foundation, like, of things, you know. And I'm like, hey, well, you know, like, and then so, like, when you're training with other good fighters who always defend, like, straightforward techniques, and you're training with Andy like this, so you learn the ways to hit people, like, like, oh, if they're giving me problems like this. So it's real cool for, like, me to, like, try things and then take things I've learned from other places and bring them to Andy. And I'd be like, hey, man, I'm trying this. And he's like, oh, I'll try this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> like, okay. So, and, and then, and then, you know, I, I do my own, I, have you know sprung out of my own things and you know have a little bit different style than Andy, but I, it's all the things that I've learned from him, like I bring into my own one way or the other, and I and I make them fit like, and make them fit into my style. And 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 you bring those Aztec 
warrior family tree what's it called look it's nonsense it's nonsense. genealogy genealogy <laughs> what's the what's the what's the website uh got y'all could have sponsored me for this episode and we got down deep into it uh some family tree.com whatever i don't yeah. know um so if you win this uh belt for efc are you do you plan to uh defend it absolutely will you defend it at every efc if i could i mean i, I I don't know. I don't do the matchmaking. Yeah, I w- yeah, man. I I really like I, when I say I love to fight. Like I I genuinely mean that. That's my thing. Is like I. What made you get in the it, fi- M- MMA, but fighting and want to be a, in combat sports? Like everyone has this, uh, a different story of how they got there. What brought you man, to this? My I man, this is like a deep, deep thing. Like I, I, my evolution as a as a person has been a lot. As my evolution as a fighter. I mean, I wrestled. And then um, I wrestled in college, and I, I mean, I got myself in a lot of trouble, and I was drinking, I was fat and out of shape, and just, like literally fat, and I was like, oh, I need something. And I was like, oh, I think I, you know, and uh, L.C. Davis, who's my college teammate, college roommate, is like a Midwest pioneer. Like he was fighting, and I was like, man, I think I can do that, and um, so I just started training in Parsons. And then I worked, started doing amateur fight, and I was just fighting. I was just, you know, like take guys down, wrestle them, and beat them up. And then I, and then I got in like a things were looking really up for me, man. I got in a bad car accident, and you know, I broke my back, lost my family, like, and uh, so then it, that took a lot out of me, man. And then I came back. I was like, I don't really want to stop doing this, like. So then, like a year later, year and a half later, two years. I like started getting back in the swing of things, and then I was fighting, man. I was fighting, and I was fighting myself in my own head, like. And 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 what, and what do you mean by that? Fight. Uh, I mean, I just I just had a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt, a lot of anger, a lot of guilt. You know, remorse, survivor's remorse, like stuff like that. Like now, at this point, are you already like fighting yeah. with a record? Yeah, I've, amateur. Or? Yeah, with the fighting with an amateur record, and then. Um, I come back to Wichita, and where'd you go? I, I was I was off in college in Nebraska, and and I came back here, and I was in the you know I was in living in the gym, and Zerger's gym, and and then the co- the college that I was going to just closed. So I just I, I've been here ever since, man, and and it took me a long time. Where'd you go to ITT Tech? No, nah, I just went to Dana College. Okay, Dana College in Blair, Nebraska. That sounds and, like college I opened up. I went to Rhode <laughs> College. And they, uh, and so I, so then like, it took me a little bit. I found closure, like to a lot of things that were hurting me. And then I, you know, then I could concentrate less on fighting and, you know, like I, I would train all day and I'd be out the bars, like doing stupid stuff. Like, and I fight, I was fighting, man. Now, now I'm a martial arts man. I'm not really a fighter. I've, you know, I've grown to enjoy like every aspect of boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, like. You know, technical aspect. Just in, and I'm a, I'm a student of the game, man. A student of the sport, and I, I never really stop improving because of that, man. Because I'm just thirsty for knowledge, and now that's I'm so thankful. Every time I get like, every time I get to get out here and fight, I'm just thankful from the opportunity to show that art, and for the opportunity to be in front of all these people, and for the opportunity to wake up in the morning, man. So some people don't do that. Now, so you said uh, you found a way to find closure. How did that? come across how, how did you get to that place man it was, it was weird i had a drunk alcohol okay i had a drunk yeah alcohol let me, let me is write that down alcohol is the way to uh not to not do it but i had a uh one of my mom's friends is like a is like a psychiatrist and we were just sitting there talking one night and he was and we were up until the sun came up and he was telling me he's like you know i'm gonna write down these things that you should do for yourself and you'll be able to bring, it'll help you bring closure. And he's like, you know, and then I want you to write down one more thing for yourself. And so I did all of these things and, and it really did. It was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. Like, how long it. did it take? It took, it took about three years, man. Like, total, Dang. like total from the accident forward. From, okay. So, but when this, when this, this list was introduced uh-huh. to you. Yeah, it took me about, took me about, about six months, probably about six months total. You know, and the, and the last thing to do, like, the last thing to do was to, um, to go to the cemetery. 
And uh, and it was hard, man. It was hard. And I never had the balls to do that before that, and it sucks, man. You went? Yeah. So one of the one I of the went there, I went there for the funeral, and but I had not been back since, and then I ended up going back to do that, and that helped me. That helped me. Man. That was the last thing that helped me close the door, and you know, it was it's tough. Tough. How man. how does it feel to have that closure? Uh, it's it's amazing, man. It's amazing, and and you know, it's, this is something that's now they're memories instead of you know like nightmares. See, I don't, I don't think I have, I don't, I don't have that. What I have is an obsession. Yeah. So like all this, everything I do is me obsession with getting past everything yeah. that I've ever dealt with. So like as a kid, I, I've never been to a funeral because I don't deal with death well at all. Right. So my best friend as a kid was murdered. Then my second best friend after that was murdered. So it was yeah. like, like now, my best friend. Now I'm like, if he get murdered, <laughs> this is I. I'm just not gonna have no more yeah. friends. But like with all that, like even like my my great grandmother, she she was there for me all the time as a kid. She died. I never, I never saw her. I never went to the funeral. Like none of that. And like even today, it's like one of those things. Like it's a it, these are memories. Like every anniversary of the death or these right. birthdays, Dates. I'm thinking about it. But it's just like. I feel like personally for me, all the talents and successes like these are are not a hundred percent me. It's like these things yeah. that was put on me strength. from all the loss. So from, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if that's a closure thing. I don't know what it is, nah, but good, I, I don't think I have that. And plus, I deal with depression and and just my way of getting past everything is just obsess on the work. How how can I how can I like everything for me in life is psychological. Like if you if you how people deal with each other, how people work with each other, because a lot of this, even when I talk about, you know, earlier we talked about the book in the documentary Wi-Fi Rock Bottom. A lot of the things that I go towards is helping me learn me. And because I dealt with addiction as well, not meth. Cause that's nothing I'm touching. But like beating those things is just like okay i'm past that because it's an addictive personality yeah. so i think that's really what Find all that is to immerse yourself in. and that's all i'm doing now today yeah, I so agree. i do like like everything in, is psychological for me but i think like i can't just do things like all these have to be contributing to the web of the one thing and so like for me it's not so much that i got the podcast or i got the film stuff or shirts it's like i'm the brand yeah. You know, and and I'm obsessing with making me this thing because if I don't, Who I'm doing. Does, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna right. get caught into something else right. that. No, so I, I completely understand that for sure. Man. I don't. I so when you say you can get like I can I've never been to the 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 cemetery like the the plots and none of that. I'm just like I can't do it. Hard like my do, mom man. wants to give me my great grandmother's urn. I'm like, nah, y'all can keep that because I don't. I don't know. I think I like the memory more than like the relics or yeah. possessions. I'd rather just keep it's, all that. I'll keep it here. It's tough, man. I, I don't know how you do it. When you physically. Soon when someone say, all right, last on the list, go to the cemetery. I'm like, this is a stupid list. I can't be doing all this. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> hey, if that, hey, if that works, yeah. If that worked rather, then I commend you because I couldn't do it. That'd be too. And maybe it's. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe yeah. I don't want to get past it. I don't know. Who knows, right? I don't know. Why you open that up? I should ask you that question. <laughs> um, where we at? Uh, okay, so then from there you become a fighter. What makes you stay with it, though? Because it, it, I'm pretty sure it hurts to get punched in the face. Yeah, I think it's a lot of the same things, man. Like, I think it's a lot of the same things. Like, keep, keep me busy. Like, And I think, like, recreationally... I'll probably do martial arts, you know, forever just because, uh, you know, there's a lot worse places I could be spending hours a night, you know, than at, than at the gym. I, but I just love to fight, man. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's not like, oh, I like the, to do this. I like to take pictures. I like the attention. Like, nah, man, when you see me win a fight, like, it's like, hey, thanks, guys. Thank you. Like, hope the dude's all right. Like, cool. 
See you later. And that's all you I could need. could be like Chris Harris and have a whole damn conversation and meet him with the opponent after you beat him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, you know, I've, you know, I, and I, I respect anyone, anyone, man, like who's uh, fighting with me. And I thank him, man. That's what I do is thank, you know, I just want to see Josh. I thank you for fighting me again, man. He's a good dude. Uh, and, um, but as it's about me, I just like to fight. I just like to fight. I think, I think like, I could be making a lot more money doing different things yeah. in my life, but I would not be happy, you know, because like, that's not what it's about to me. About fighting. I mean, it's about, you I know, it's about just, it. uh, it's the adventure, man, the adventure. The adventure. So how does this story end for you? How do you see it in? <laughs> man, I'm going to win this EFC belt, and I'm going to defend it 15 times here in Wichita, and then I'm going to walk away and... uh Hang out with my son. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was so poetic. I'm going to win. It's like a good movie. <laughs> and I'm going to go against the sunset. That's all I needed. <laughs> it was a win, a belt, and my son. <laughs> Some, something like that. I need, I need a lot of I mean, I went. I want to defend Wichita. I want to win this belt, and I want people to come here. I want to help. Now, you know, it'd be cool to, I'd love to help, you know, Dave and Chris and Steve are good dudes, man. Dave's a real good friend of mine. So I'd love to help them build this brand. And, you know, I think that my, my style of fighting is so conducive to show business. Yeah. So that's the, how, let me ask you, how important do you think entertainment is versus being good? I think to me, entertainment is the world, like. To me, it's what like why, like why no one's to like no. I'm here to sh I'm here to fight. When I when I what I mean by entertainment, I don't mean like being boisterous and saying a bunch of crazy stuff like uh in the in the style of Conor McGregor, and because Conor McGregor is such a good fighter, like his his actions can speak for themselves. But I mean like putting on a fight. Like you don't hear Donald Cerrone talking a bunch of like he he'll speak up every now and then, but you know his actions speak for themselves. Like he throws but down. That's not conducive to business. No. That doesn't make money. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You're right. You're right. It doesn't. It may not. It may not. I mean, but I get more fights like that. It may not. I may not win as many fights like that, but I get more fights because people know. Like, I mean, there's a reason, like, Ryan Starter keeps asking me to come back to VFC because he knows what kind of fight I'm bringing. Like, I'm, I'm throwing down. Like, no matter who it is, what they're doing, my strategy doesn't change. I'm going to try and put you to sleep with my knuckles. Like, all right. Now, what I'm going to need you to do, man, you win this title, right? Now, the after uh, September 2nd at the Kansas Star Casino Arena, EFC 6, you yep. still get tickets at Ticketmaster. Go to EFCfight.com. Then the after part is at Revolution Lounge. You win that, you come up there with that belt. All right? <laughs> but before you do that, I'm going to need you to go over here to EvokeTouch.com. EvokeTouch.com. Now, they got a... Uh, they got two. They got two good male brands out there for you. You got the Night Out Collection. It smells great, man. Or you can get that Distinguished Gentleman no, or Perfect man. Gentleman. It's kind of the same brand. Yeah. You like a little smell good. A little smelling good. A little man. smell. I could good. use that, man. Like a, maybe like skip a shower every now and then. No, nah, I right. mean, I mean, if you go, I, you know what? I ain't gonna tell you what to do with your hygiene. That's none of my business, man. Y'all just rolled around on these mats with all kind of human <laughs> extra on it, so. But anyway, you get that night out collection. It's from EvokeTouch.com, from Touch Body Works, E V O K E Touch.com. It's a skincare that's so natural you could eat it, but don't. Don't eat it, though. Don't eat it. You can't. You could. It's not kill you. I, don't. I ain't going to tell you what it could, it can't do, but it's natural. <laughs> it's that natural that you could, but we don't want you to do that because, in case you know, you got right. bad insides that could go bad. But. It's a collection inspired by the weekend, and every scent evokes a night out on the town. Now, if you go over to evoketouch.com, you can get that night out collection. And when you check out, use promotion code PODCAST10. That's PODCAST10 at checkout. You get 10% off of whatever you're buying there. Stuff for men, like the night out collection, like distinguished gentlemen or perfect gentlemen. Or you can get some for your lady, your mom, a friend. They got a margarita, margarita salt scrub. Some shea butter and rice body lotion, some red honey soap. I oh, it sound good. I use it. it sounds you know good. what I mean. So you can go in there and get that, save that ten percent over at evoketouch.com with Touch Body Works. Now, 
you got anything last things you want to say before we got here ah uh, man i just want to uh thanks for thank you for coming out to visit me man thanks to uh everybody listening thanks to efc in wichita and uh all of my training partners and trainers i uh, thank you guys too man all right what how how, how should we predict this finish well how are you predicting this end uh violently oh <laughs> first round violently hopefully could be could be i've got a lot of i've got a lot of a long night i've got a lot of first round first minute victories so let's well all right you do that you might get kind of famous so uh, make sure you go over to the Facebook page, kindoffamouspod.com, K-I-N-D-A, famous pod, P-O-D, not dot com. Uh, or you can go over to arrowfilms.com, see all my stuff. And while you're over on Facebook, make sure you stop over at the EFC Facebook page at EFC Wichita. And until next time, we'll see you over at right. EFC 6 right. at Kansas Star Casino September 2nd. Tell your mom I said hi. So in light of you being kind of famous... Why the hell I'm kind of famous? Who the hell she knows?